I'm going to declare this the start of uh, Norton Conservation Commission meeting for Monday, May 23rd, 2022. Uh, it is now 6.31. And um, as is required uh, for these remote Zoom meetings, it looks like we, we might have just lost Dan Pearson. Oh, Dan. Well, Dan doesn't look like he's connected. So, um, so Dan, if you're connected, unmute yourself. Otherwise, I will go ahead and read. Our uh, I'm all. I can do it. Uh, okay. All right. So we're at the <coughs> spot where we need to read our obligatory preamble, um, which explains the suspension of certain requirements of the open meeting law. So, Dan, uh, take it away. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020, or suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GL 30A, Section 18, and the Governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitation on the number of people that gather in one place, this meeting of the Norton Conservation Commission will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and the guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found at the end of this agenda. Members of the public in this public hearing slash meeting virtually will be allowed to make comments to do so during the portion of the hearing designated for comment by raising their hand virtually or pressing star nine if participating by phone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post on the Norton Cable website, www.nortonmedia.org, an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. All right. Thank you, Dan. And we're going to introduce um, both uh, the members of the commission as well as John Thomas, our conservation director, Megan Harrop, our assistant, and uh, I'm Julian Kadish, Chair. We have Lisa Carroza, Vice Chair, and uh, Carrie Schneider, Mark Fernandez, Tom Avest, and Dan Pearson uh, of the Commission staff attending. Um, and our first item uh, on the agenda is new public hearings of which we do not have any listed uh, this week. Uh, and then if we move on to continued public hearings, we have uh, notice of intent for zero rear Eddy Street, DEP number, uh, file number 250-1070. They have requested a continuance until June 13th. Uh, so I would be interested in hearing a motion to that effect. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to continue DEP file 250-1070 to the June 13th meeting of the Conservation Commission. All right, motion made by Dan and seconded by? I'll second. Seconded by Kerry. Uh, roll call vote starting with Tama and Mark. Aye. Aye. And uh, Dan and Lisa. Aye. And Dan shows a yes and uh, Kerry and myself. Yes. And I'll throw in a yes. So the motion passes uh, the uh, hearing for File number 250-1070 has been continued until June 13th. Next item on the agenda is um, notice of intent, file number 250-1093 concerning 70 Oak Street. Um, and they have also requested a continuance until June 13th, uh, and we can entertain such a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to continue DEP file 250-1093 to the 13th uh, meeting of the commission. 
Second. Uh, we have a motion made by Dan Pearson, seconded by. Second. Lisa, did I hear something? That's a second by Lisa. Uh, again, roll call vote starting with Tama and Mark. Aye. Aye. And uh, we'll change up here, Carrie and Lisa. Aye. Aye. And Dan, I saw a yes go up. Is that correct? Yes. Aye. Okay, and I'll throw in a yes. So the motion carries. Um, file number 250-1093 is continued until June 13th. Um, we have um, a next uh, item C, which is file number 250-1096. It's a, an NRAD for 93 Mansfield Avenue, zero Mansfield Avenue, and, and zero Reservoir Street, um, which is a project to verify resource areas. So um at this point do we have were there were there outstanding issues john on this or do, is this a, a um are we just at the point of closing this and issuing a uh an orad i guess well they they sent over updated calculations and an updated plan which i'm sure jim's going to be able to provide the commission an overview today um but then they also sent over a cover letter which I don't actually have. So Jim, if you don't want to just kind of walk through the commission, kind of what, where we left off last meeting and kind of pick, give them, get them up to speed on kind of what the current, current status is, that'd be great. Certainly. Um, my understanding is, is that there was, um, uh, you know, a concern with regards to defining that ILSF AC um, next to uh, the BC uh, BVW. And let's see if I can share my screen here. This is the cover letter I prepared, but the plan that I also prepared, can everyone see that? Yes. Yes, we can. So this is a 40 scale blow up of that ILSF. And if you look at uh, these blue contours, uh, they are traces of the, the contours that we made a, a, a one tenth of a foot contour uh, map of this area. Um, if you zoom in a little tighter, um, you can see these spot rates, the 12.6, the 112.8. You can see you know, they're kind of tough to see, but they're, these are the field shots. There's got to be at least, you know, 16 shots in this area that define uh, this low-lying area. Now, I asked my field crew to do that specifically uh, because we wanted to define uh, the volume of this low-lying area. Um, which I can zoom out a little bit. What we found is that this area is actually 4,085 uh, uh, cubic feet uh, of volume. And we established that by uh, using this 112.8 to 112.7. That's actually the outfall for this low lying area. And you'll see the, the contours, even though the map uh, the program that shows the 112.7 connecting this 112.7 and this 112.7, I brought it out to the 112.8 to kind of give it a little bit more conservative volume. Um, and it's still, you know, we're at 4,085. The jurisdictional volume is 10,260, if I'm not mistaken, a uh, quarter acre foot. Um, so it's not a jurisdictional ILSF, and uh, the cover letter kind of explains the uh, how we arrived at those calculations. And the previous sheets, we, the uh, regulations also require us to do some uh, HydroCAD uh, calculations. They ask you to route a seven-inch storm event, which is the 100-year event, uh, through the pond, the low-lying ILSF. And these are the elevations in the contour areas that were shown on that map from 110.30 to 110.5, all the way up to 112.8. And we put a broad crested weir across the edge of it at 112.7 as the outfall. Now the depth certainly complies. We're at 2.4 feet. So it has, it's certainly greater than the six inch minimum depth, but the volume of the 4,085 
uh, is, is, is significantly lower than what's jurisdictional. Um, and that's basically uh, the, the, the last point, I think, the, the last concern uh, that uh, the commission had with regards to this particular filing. All right, so any further questions of, um, from members of the commission? Uh, and John, I don't know if you have any comment on this or, or not. I mean, the only thing that kind of, you know, is glaring to me on this plan is the potential vernal pool, how it's labeled that way. So, I mean, as, as I mentioned last, last meeting, you know, it looks like to me that this pool is of certifiable status. So, um, you know, if we do, if the commission does choose to issue a or, uh, order of resource area delineation for this property, I would probably want a condition that, you know, either that that gets is confirmed uh, with the notice of intent application, or they concede that it potentially is because, you know, I did find 21 salamander egg masses and over 400 tadpoles in that pool. So I just want to clarify that for the commission. If, if, if I could jump in, I, I did have a quick conversation with Art Allen on that. Um, he, he, he agrees with you, John. He said mm -hmm. it is certifiable and we don't have a problem of, of moving forward uh, with that in the ORAD and uh, we can address that in the notice of intent uh, in the future. Okay. All right, so opening it up to anybody in the audience, including any commission members or anybody who has a comment. Uh, otherwise, it sounds like this, we've kind of got all the information required to consider closing this uh, and correct me if I'm wrong on that, John. So John Thomas, so we want to ask them to actually certify it with ESHAP as a condition. Um, that would either be a condition uh, per the commission on how they would, would want it. Uh, we could do that mm -hmm. or at the time of a, it would, I would actually prefer to do it through the ORAD process, um, to kind of get that yeah. kind of finalized. And then when they come in with the NOI, it's basically, you know, tied together. So I think that's probably the, the process that I would prefer to go route. And if the commission agrees with that, that's kind of the thought that I had going. Well, I guess the question is how soon they think they're going to file a notice of intent because do we tie it to the notice of intent filing or do we tie it to the issuance of the order for the notice? I mean, if they're going to turn around and get us um, something to digest, you know, next month and it may, they may not have enough time to get certified. Right. And we're kind of coming down to the wire for, um, you know, evaluating vernal pools. So, um, you know, I, I don't know how the commission wants to, you know, look at this, whether the commission feels comfortable saying that's a certifiable vernal pool based on my investigations, or if the, you know, the commission it's, feels more, more important that it is, um, you know, registered with NHESP. Well, it's definitely certifiable. Yes. And I mean, I, I totally agree with that based on two professional opinions. The, the question is, when we're going to tie the certification through NISHA. Is it going to be through this process or are we going to tie it to the issuance of a, a, an order of condition for a project at some point? Jim, is there any idea as to when you may be coming before us? Are we talking, you know, six months or? It, it, it won't be, um, you know, uh, certainly won't be within the timeframes for uh, certification of a vernal pool. Uh, we, I'd say we're probably seriously looking at uh, maybe end of the summer um, would be uh, the time that we'd be submitting a, a notice of intent. Now, we, we've we been working with the client and uh, providing a conceptual designs with the proper protection for a fertile pool for this particular area. And we understand its uh, value and its uh, uh how it is concerned for uh, the Norton Conservation Commission and we'll be treating it as such in the design. I think from a, um, an ORAD perspective, um, having it uh, defined as certifiable, I think it is, is fine. I, I still would have um, Art Allen uh, of Ecotech take a look at the ORAD and make sure that, that uh, he's in agreement with regards to how it's defined uh, in that manner. And uh, uh, I think from a standpoint of uh, 
how the ORAD is written and how it's, it's agreed to upon us. We, we'll, we'll be reviewing it as well. Um, I think this particular area of a well-protected uh, uh, currently with the ORAD and, and in the future with a future notice of intent. Okay. Um, the more I'm thinking about this, we should definitely tie it to the ORAD. Here's why. If this project doesn't go anywhere, go on, you know, get off the ground, then it's not documented anywhere. So, I mean, at a minimum, we should ask, um, or we should make the statement that it's a certifiable vernal pool and that the client, uh, the applicant should certify it through niche app. I think I think the ORAD, if it, if it's if it's drafted the way John says it's going to be drafted, and and, and we accept it and record it, um, I think that'll will cover you pretty well. Just as my personal thought. Right, but somebody has to go through the process of getting it, sir, of certifying it. Understood. Right. And, um, you know, I, I think um, from a standpoint of of uh, uh, how this project is going to be designed in. Uh, and how it's going to be permitted with the town um, and with the state. Um, I think th there'll be uh, enough time to, to determine to make a certification. I think you won't be doing any construction uh, near this uh, vernal pool um, in a year, just my opinion. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I think the client doesn't want to hear that, but I, I think that's reality. <laughs> just, we, have a, we have a long way to go for the design. Yeah. I mean, I think we have enough to craft a, um, a few conditions on it. So, sure. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, unless there are further questions or comments, as I understand it, we have enough information to close this um, uh, this NRAD hearing. Uh, so. Correct me if I'm wrong, or we can go ahead and entertain a motion to do so. All right, John Thomas, you're not waiting for anything else, right? No, we're not so waiting. We're, for we're not waiting for anything else. Okay. We're, we're good to go. Okay, so I'll make a motion to close the public hearing for file um, DEP 250-1096. Second. <clears throat> Excuse me, Lisa second. And second by. Second by, yeah, we have a second by um, Dan Pearson. So again, uh, roll call vote, starting with Tama and Mark. Aye. Aye. And we have Carrie and Dan Pearson. Aye. And we have Lisa, and I'll throw in an aye as well. Aye. All right, motion carries. Um, the NRAD hearing for file number 250-1096 is closed. We will be issuing an ORAD um, uh, likely at our next meeting, I believe. Is that correct, John? That is correct. Excellent. And our next thank item, you, our ne All right, thank you. Our next item, um, on our agenda is uh, end of public hearings and a request for a partial uh, and or a certificate of compliance um, for this, in this case, file number 250-10368, a long way back, uh, for um, a partial certificate of compliance for 196 um, Minesfield Avenue. Uh, maybe you can just fill in because I don't personally remember exactly what the proposed work was but uh, it does say the work was never done but yeah this was this was a, a lingering I guess a lingering project way back when uh, and it was part of a larger scale proposed project but they didn't use the bird sanctuary as part of the project um, so obviously we know that 196 is we just approved another project for that property so the seller uh, had his attorney go through all the outstanding items and everything and i didn't even know this one because it was not even on our um master list so i had to go searching through the actual um documents to kind of find it but it was it was in the 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 or the uh notice of intent application as one of the parcels i looked at it and it just there was nothing done on the property it was not part of the what they were proposing to do so um this is just kind of a administrative closeout 
for for them to kind of move through for the um, closing of the the property for 196. John, so, why are they asking for a partial? Because typically, was it part of another so development? It was. It was a partial for another. So, for instance, it's one of many parcels um, that was included with this project. And I recommended doing the partial because it only closes out this parcel. I haven't even looked at the other ones yet because there's quite a bit of files for this one. Um, but you know, I'm trying to trying to make some way on kind of understanding this pro this project a little bit better. Um, I've just been kind of pulled in other directions. I haven't really had much time to kind of take a look at all the other stuff in more detail. So this one number, this 368, is tied to multiple parcels. Is that it? So yeah, 368 is tied to multiple parcels. So how, all right, well, obviously we're going to be able to distinguish this parcel from another one with um, how? Because this parcel is 278.17. It's the same parcel that was used for the 196 project. 196 is, with the 196 project that just came in, it was actually two parcels combined for that project for the Flex Warehouse building. Um, and the 278.17 was one of those parcels. So, so basically, John, th this is similar to uh, when we release a single house out of a subdivision. Right. It, that's that's how I'm looking at it. Um, I don't want to really. I didn't want them to release release the whole entire or cert give a certificate of compliance for the whole project because I don't know what the current status is for the whole entire thing, uh, and it wasn't requested for that parcel. So I I just want to basically do a partial for this one because I think it's the right way to do it. Okay, just as long as we can make that distinction somehow yeah. as to exactly which one it is, and um, I would make that motion to issue a partial COC for uh, 250-368. Okay, any further comment or a second? I'll second. All right, so we have a motion made by Lisa, seconded by Kerry, to issue a partial certificate of compliance, which is restricted to parcel 278-17, for file number 250-368. Again, a roll call vote, beginning with Tama and Mark. Aye. I think I heard Thomas say aye, or saw Thomas say aye. Oh yeah, you're on mute, uh, Tama, but... Uh, um, Sorry, aye. Okay, and again, uh, Terry and Dan. Dan has already thrown in a yes. Aye. I think you meant Carrie. Yes. <laughs> uh, I don't know what I said, but I thought I said Carrie. Um, um, who knows what I said? <laughs> we won't reverse the tape. All right, Lisa, and uh, I'll throw in an I. Right. Uh, so right. what, what, this is Jim Marsh. I actually represent uh, the the owner of um, two seventy eight seventeen. It's and and it includes two seventy eight eighteen as well. Um, that was on the the order. Um, and that's what we're requesting a COC for that as well. Oh, so I, I, you know what? I'm probably made a mistake. Is that the same parcel for one? It's the same parcel. It's one ninety two okay. one six. Yeah. Okay. I just want to. I don't want to come back. Nope. Nope. No worries. So, do we have to just rescind that vote? I would. I would. Yeah. I would rescind that vote and well, include well, include the two parcels. Well, why, so. why do why don't we just add another motion uh, that? Um, the other parcel was two seventy eight eighteen, was it? That's correct. Okay. Yeah, why don't we just add okay. add uh, two seventy eight eighteen to this motion? Okay, so I will um, make a motion to issue a partial COC for uh, file number two fifty dash three sixty eight parcel two seventy eight dash eighteen. And a second would be. I'll second as well. Uh, so motion made by Lisa, seconded by Carrie, to um, add. File num uh, parcel number 278.17 to that partial certificate of compliance. Again, a roll call vote. Mark and Tama. Aye. Aye. And Carrie and Dan. Aye. Aye. And Dan has shown uh, an aye, and Lisa and I'll throw in an aye. Aye. All right. Thanks for catching that, Jim. Thank you so much. Have a great Thanks. night. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Yep. All right. Very good. So um, we are now up to um, signing orders of conditions or actually issuing an ORAD for zero South Washington Street. Um, a fairly um, 
limited uh, ORAD. Uh, any questions about this? I assume you guys got the text uh, in your packets. Any comments? If not, we can go for a motion to approve the ORAD as submitted. I will make a motion to break. approve it. No, nope, we're here. All right, there we go. Okay, good. So motion made by Tama to approve the ORAD as drafted and seconded by? Second. <clears throat> seconded by Mark. Uh, so Lisa, before we vote, is this uh, one of those projects where you need to abstain? I will be abstaining, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, we'll start with roll call vote with Tama and Mark. Aye. Aye. And Carrie and Dan? Aye. Aye. And I'll throw in an aye and Lisa. Abstain. Uh, abstain. And our next um, item on the agenda is file number 250-1101 concerning 173, order condition 173 South Worcester Street. Um, a fairly straightforward project. Any comments on the draft that was submitted? Um, I, have, I have some. So I think this is an administrative issue. So if we look at 14, well, let's look at 15. 15 is the problem here. Um, it's just kind of hanging. It says the Conservation Commission will issue a decision within 21 days of, rec of receiving the written request. I, this, I think this is a follow-up with the, obviously, with the Certificate of Compliance with 14. So should this be F and then, and then 16 should be G all the way up to 18 should be I. Because this, as it's written, 14, uh, 15 doesn't make sense. It's not yeah. tied back to the request for certificate. I, I, I see what you're saying. Yep. Okay. okay. So do we want to call that F and then 16 is G, 17 is H, 18 is I? Yes. I say we do that. Okay. I think that's how we initially, had, uh, Jen had already, already set them up. And then... Um, 15 is repetitive with 12, and it's just a little bit different in terms of notification within 48 hours. You know, one just says 48 hours prior to the commencement of work. The other one says any work within the buffer zone. So we want to make those consistent. They, see, okay. they, they say two different things. So from the contractor, one of them just says 48 hours. The other one says I can't go in the buffer zone. So... I, I can do work, but I can't go in the buffer zone. I say we eliminate one of them. Okay. So, what's your preference? Do I'll leave that out? up to the, I'll leave that up to the commission to decide. Uh, I would keep twelve and ditch um, nineteen. Okay. Now fifteen. But <laughs> okay. Um, moving on to thirty-five. Ah. Uh, so dewatering location shall be approved by the conservation agent, not by the contractor. So this document is going to a contractor to execute. It has to be more prescriptive than that. So when do you want it? When do you want to approve it? When do I want say when, again, sorry? Right. So this this needs to be this needs to be turned into a directive or an action by the contractor, right? It says it shall be approved by the CONCOM agent, not by the contractor. I think that should just say prior to dewatering activities. Okay. Right? Yep. Okay. 
Um, and then when, when do you want it? Do you want it a week ahead of time, two weeks ahead of time? If you want to give them a deadline or because they'll give it to you like the day before, you know, that's typically what happens anyway. So, um, well, I mean, we can, we can do, you know, at least five, five, well, five days beforehand. I mean, that would be nice. Usually yeah. a week, but okay. And then 36, um, I, I think you just mean excess soil from the pool excavation. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Instead of location, shall not be placed in the buffer zone. Is there any way to put it that's outside the buffer zone? On this site, I don't. Uh, on this site per se, I would say it'd be very slim. I think most of the, maybe where the right next to the septic, or SAS, but I I don't know, for this site because it's very limited. Yeah, I, I just don't know if it's a fair. Yeah. Um, Maybe the f furthest extent from the resource area. I I don't know, or on the gravel parking area. Uh, that's kind of worse because if it rains, you, you can't chase. Well, we, I, I would hope they would have sedimentation controls if they're going to be doing stuff. Right, but you can't stake those in the pavement. That's even worse. That's true. That's true. Um, yeah. Um. Okay. I would just say it should be covered when not in use. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. So excess soil for, excess soil from the pool excavation shall be covered when not in active use. And then did they say where they were going to dispose of it? Or are they going to reuse it on site, do you think? For this one? I don't know. I mean, they didn't. I don't want to force anybody to take material off site if they don't need to. Certainly I don't want to see it dumped in the wetland, but um Right. I mean I don't I don't think that was discussed about with them on what they're gonna do with the material on site. And I think they were just gonna bring in gravel material for the um for the parking area, the driveway. So um then we can just leave it as as parked off site. And if they can't do it, they'll they'll hopefully tell you that and we'll right. put something else. Um, and then the uh, conditions in perpetuity 45. Oh, I think we're okay there. I don't think those numbers have to be adjusted because we didn't issue, uh, we didn't update anything. We didn't update anything before 28. So yeah, okay. those, those should be, those should be constant. Okay. Uh, those are the only comments I had. Any other discussion? So if not, we can consider a motion to uh, approve order of conditions for file number 250-1101 as modified. Uh, I'll make that motion to approve the draft order of conditions for 250-1101 as discussed. Uh, motion made by Lisa and seconded by. Second. Seconded by Kerry. So uh, roll call vote beginning with Tama and Mark. Aye. Aye. And Carrie and Dan. Hi. Hi. And uh, Lisa, and I'll throw in an I. Hi. So the motion carries the uh, amended uh, or modified draft of file number 250 1101 order conditions is approved. Uh, we now have. Uh, review draft minutes of May 9th. Uh, any comments on those minutes? And I think well, Carrie's the only one that uh, can't really vote on it, but we certainly have a quorum for that. I think, I think I had one comment on page nine, uh, the continuation of 1096. I think. All right, so the last sentence says that the core has jurisdiction. And I think we said DEP water quality cert. Because I think I had said that. 
under uh, you know other jurisdictions. Okay. So. We can we can check the tape too. Okay. Okay. That's the only thing I had. All right. Uh, any other comments? No, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, meeting minutes for Monday, May 9th, 2022. Motion made by Lisa for approval of uh, the modified draft of minutes. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, second by uh, Tama Vest. Again, roll call vote, beginning with Tama and Mark. Aye. Aye. And Lisa and Dan. Aye. Aye. I'll say <clears throat> aye and Carrie, I'm assuming you're going to register an abstention. Yes. Okay. Um, so that's and oh wait a second, we got uh, a few more items. Um, obviously, you guys are going to have to deal with uh, uh, March 10th and uh, April 5th executive session meetings uh, minutes. Um, but uh, old business, anything from site inspections, report from staff, or summer meeting schedule? We are busy. Everybody wants to do stuff this, this spring and moving into summer. So very active with the inspections. We've got a couple active projects right now that are happening. So making sure that we're keeping tabs on all those projects and making sure they're in compliance for uh, conservation requirements and also stormwater requirements. So very active in the field right now. So not a lot of office time for me. Um, but uh, I just wanted to, I guess, talk to everybody for the summer. Um, as everyone knows, I'm expecting a young one um, the first week of July. So uh, I'm looking at our meeting schedule coming up. And, um, you know, we have a couple meetings, I guess, we have the June 13th meeting, which is our next one. And then June 27th, July 11th, I'm probably not gonna be in attendance. So I'm just gonna let everybody know. So, um, and then we have July 25th, August 8th, August 22nd. So I don't know what everyone's schedule looks like for this, this summer, but I know that I'm probably gonna have to postpone for my attendance uh, July 11th. So if anyone else has any sort of um, inability to attend the meetings, let us know so we can kind of arrange that uh, and we can hopefully get quorums for the other ones. Well, you know, you, you could bring the little one in, get him started right away, you know, so he gets his, <laughs> gets his bearing. He got, a, well, just so everyone knows, our um, nursery is a camping theme with nature, so... It's kind of it's fitting, <laughs> but um, oh, you, you you got Megan to step in. Yeah, I do have Megan to step in. She was actually on a site visit with me today, so she's getting her her feet wet, uh, which is great. Excellent. So, John, if there are any site visits you need, I know when Jen was out, I used to do the either it was a, a, a kickoff. You know, if, if somebody was going to hold up somebody starting construction or whatever, just let me know. Yeah, we'll see, we'll, we'll, we'll see how the, the schedule looks as mm -hmm. we move forward with, with inspections and projects and scheduling and stuff. Um, but if there's anything else that, you know, people are have scheduled vacations for the summer, um, let me know. So that way I can kind of arrange to have uh, the meeting scheduled accordingly. Um, that way we can make sure we have quorums throughout the summer. All right. Fair enough. So, um, you guys can, so nothing else to, to discuss before I sign off. Uh, and you just have those two other items uh, to deal with if you have quorums for those. And uh, I don't know that we do, but. Well, all right, but that's, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, so next meeting is June 13th. Mm -hmm. I will be, I anticipate I will be here uh, without a problem. And uh, so I'll see everybody uh, then. And uh, John and Megan, thank you for the good work you guys do. And thank everybody else on the commission for participating in the process.
of governance of democracy. Just That's a favorite topic of mine. All right. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank Hi, you, Julian. Everybody. Bye, Mark. Bye.